Welcome to the RE3 podcast. I'd like to introduce Dub Booth, Big D, and me, Jeremy. Is Isaac going to destroy the earth? Is Obama the leader of the Illuminati? Are you crazy enough to be committed in 2024? Crazy enough to be committed. But first, <laughs> we at RE3 are allies to all. In, in that spirit, we bring to you a slam dunk of a diss that is guaranteed to leave your man reeling, fuming even. This one is for the ladies. I wouldn't suck your lousy dick if I was suffocating and there was oxygen in your balls. Dude, that's a cutting. <laughs> that is fucking hilarious, dude. Could you imagine your girl telling you your dick is lousy? No, dude. That's, <laughs> that's brutal. I feel like all women go to the, uh, your dick is small. Like when you break up, they all go to, uh, you got a tiny dick. But you know that's not true because they're angry when they say it. Yeah. But you got a lousy dick? I wouldn't <laughs> suck your lousy dick. What's the worst insult you've ever gotten from a woman? Dude, I got to go way back to remember one that actually bothered me. But I was probably in like the fourth or fifth grade. And I was trying to talk to the girl that I liked. And, and she was already like... Dude, in the lunch line, she was, like, standing with another guy. And she clearly liked this guy now. And I was trying to talk to her, and she goes, you got, you have boogers in your nose. <laughs> God damn it. That was brutal. That's a crush. Boogers in your nose? It was fucking a crush. I was, like, star <laughs> staring at her. I'm trying to have a serious conversation. <laughs> you got boogers in your nose. I'm like, uh, well, hold on. I fix this. <laughs> Like him, oh, yeah. is it dropping. Is it gone? Is it? <laughs> why don't you love me anymore? <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. D, what about you? I don't, I don't think I ever had. Oh, you're perfect. Amy, really? <laughs> that yeah, makes sense. Probably a little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's an old <sighs> saying, dude, that ladies love the D. For sure. <laughs> but no, I don't think I've. No, I can't remember really any insults. What do you got, Booth? I don't think I'm allowed to say that <laughs> like on the air. <laughs> means he'd get arrested for it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, have uh, have you ever thought about what you might do in the case of a attack? No, I, I never thought about it. Are you prepared? Like, let's say, like, you're walking down the street, boom, attack. Pair of these hands, baby. You just, yeah, you just pull <laughs> That's them up. That's the only thing you got right there if you. And that is one tactic, but here's another one. No. Dude, that guy Dude. had a piece of pizza in his <laughs> inventory. It's arsenal. <laughs> Here, bitch. <laughs> Dude, I'm kind of wondering if these people are right. Like, this guy says this is a, a train bear with its guy. I, I don't know for sure. It has to be. You don't just have a slice of pizza in your pocket. Yeah, that's a wild move. That's got to be stated. That's, that's hilarious, though, dude. Yeah, very interesting. Um, mentioned this in the intro. Are you crazy enough to be committed to fitness? And I think that there's something, there's some truth to the idea that you need to be a little crazy to commit to fitness. And this guy embodies the level of crazy I think we all need to have in 2024. You want to have a drink, you say no. They ask if you want to have a drag of this blunt, you say no. They ask if you want to have some of this junk food and go out to eat with them, you say no. And all of a sudden they're looking at you like you're crazy. Don't you have any fun? You need to loosen up a little bit. Here's the thing, the more serious that you are about improving yourself, when you don't live the lifestyle of the 99%, you're committed 
to embodying your greatest and strongest version. You're not going to resonate with a whole lot of people. And see, a lot of people are going to think there's something wrong with this disciplined lifestyle you live. In their mind, it's okay to go out and get drunk every Friday night. In their mind, quick. it's okay to treat themselves and reward themselves. I think a lot of people think that there's something wrong with this guy for a different reason than he's not going out for pizza. That guy's crazy. That guy is a <laughs> crazy. He looks crazy. Self with BS food. In their mind, it's okay to have one night stands and hook up with people who don't genuinely care about them. But see, when you're serious about improving yourself, you realize that all those dumbass habits are a waste of fucking time and are doing nothing for you but keeping you stuck. Don't engage with individuals who think there's something wrong with you trying to be the best <laughs> fucking you see those people are only going to hold you, you down and keep right you there. stuck if you continue to involve yourself with them shine your fucking light embody your greatest version and don't fucking dim who you are to meet the standards of those around you oh Whoa. what did you say about his lip like a piece of meat or something kept flying on the you kept beating him back. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> probably a piece of crack. <laughs> By the intensity in his eyes, my guess is there's a little bit of crack involved. <laughs> so maybe he's no pizza, no junk food, but definitely a little crack. A little something in there. And there's a little something going on. Well, like I said, there's nothing really wrong with committing. It's just don't make it a job. Right. That's some of the people, I think that a lot of people forget when they're working out and stuff, they kind of make it a job. Yes. And it gets tiring after a while, like at your normal job. Yeah. Like you get there and you get tired of it, but you got to be there working out. You, you keep on doing it. You make it a job. And like, hey, I can quit this. I don't really need to. Yeah. He He's clearly committed to working out. He looks great from what we can see. He looks in shape, but I think he might need to be committed to an insane asylum because <laughs> he might need a little work <laughs> up here. Yeah. Go have at a least, slice of pizza, dude. <laughs> at least that's it. <laughs> yeah, dude, a piece of pizza might do this guy some good. Just yeah. a slice. Just a slice. Just one. Just a tip. Piece of pizza. Mm. <laughs> he wouldn't survive a fucking bear attack. He won't take the pizza. <laughs> anyway, that was stupid. I think this is a good time to get into our next segment. And it's our very first time trying this. D. What? D, you went uh, to Disneyland. Mm. For Christmas, dude. That seems like an awesome thing to do. Yeah, it was. It was actually really fun. And me being from California is crazy. That's my first time going. That was your first <laughs> time? <laughs> yes, dude. Holy shit, dude. I did not know that. Yeah, that was the my first time going. And I actually enjoyed it, dude. I really enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it. My kids enjoyed it. And we had a lot of fun, dude. Damn. And uh, what percentage of the rides would you say... You guys got to. Well, I got a couple of rides. I don't do big roller coasters and stuff, but my kids and my wife, they got on the ride. Um, <laughs> I got a little water ride, a little thing, but I don't. The river raft, the raging yeah. river raft. Yeah, I did that. That's an awesome ride. It was fun. It was fun. I want to make it my life's mission to get you on a roller coaster. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Oh, man, I would love for it to happen. And just to film it. I'll do a lot of crazy shit, but that's one where I draw a line. Skydiving? I might do some skydiving. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, I love skydiving. I, I mean, did I did it, it one, one time. Oh. But I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was a great time. Um, Was there anything unique or like uh interesting about your trip no we're just we're just fun i think we're gonna start doing it every every year 
Disneyland every year. Not Disneyland, but going somewhere every year for Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of buying all these toys and stuff, it's like they only interested in toys for like what a day or two, <sighs> dude. Then they're gonna forget about it. Why not? Instead of toys and presents, let's start installing some memories. You know what I mean? That's a absolutely a hundred percent. I am fucking sick and tired of toys, bro. <laughs> like seriously, you can ask your kid, "What do you want? What don't you want? What don't they have yeah. that you haven't got them already?" And it's kind of get to the point where I was getting the same shit every year. Yeah, <laughs> like throwing it away <laughs> and rebuying, rebuying it, dude. Like, yeah. I feel like the Grinch, dude. The toys, toys, toys. Like, <laughs> like wanting to steal everything and, and throw it away. But yet, I, I'm kind of getting a little tired even of just the whole Christmas thing. Is I love the magic. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. I, I want to I want to keep that going for my kids. But it's all candy and toys. And it's just brutal dude You're, it it's just a waste of money it is a lot of money too yeah it's a lot of money a lot of freaking money if you think about all the stuff you buy mm-hmm. it's a lot of freaking money every year i took my kids to that enchant christmas and that was just a um you know big lighted park at the salt river fields which is where they do spring training i think the the cubs oh yeah they're talking about, yeah yeah they do spring training there. They filled the entire bottom up with a light maze. Um, I don't know. It was cool. And it was interesting, dude. Just a like a 200-foot Christmas tree with lights on it, the maze, and they had all kinds of cool stuff in there. But it probably costs like 300 bucks to get a family of five in there. Mm. Mm. Every drink, they had drinks. That was nice. Every drink was 15 bucks. I'm sure I spent six hundred dollars by the yeah, end of that me. deal to take your kids to see Christmas lights. I don't know. That is crazy. Yeah, it seems crazy. But what I will say, mm-hmm. if you do go out there, go to Tony Roma's. You went to Tony Roma's. Yes. And it, oh gosh. Oh, that's the steakhouse. The steakhouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was delicious. Yeah. Last time I went, I went to Morton's. Morton's is good at anywhere. I wouldn't been to Morton's too, but yeah, it was good, dude. I got a t- uh, tomahawk steak. It had to be that big, man. Murdered it. <laughs> Murdered that cow twice. <laughs> uh, and they had uh, half of the Star Wars rides closed. Yes, yes, dude. That's but I love to do that. Fucking, that Star Wars ride, dude. Me and my son were on it. Yeah, the I, we the, probably will on that ride about six times. God damn, back to back, <laughs> back to back, dude. That's a Millennium Falcon, back to back. Yeah. So, what would he do? Would he pilot it? That's what was, that was the problem was. We wouldn't want to wait line. It was an hour wait. Yeah. So we were engineers. Oh. We never got to pilot. That's what we want to do, but oh it was like a hour wait. And the last time we went, we went back. Because he was talking about the whole time. Like, oh, I want to be a pilot. So we went back. Went to wait in line. And I'm standing there. We're standing there. And he's like, yeah, you know we can leave. <laughs> I'm like, oh, can we? Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny, dude. Yeah, the lines are brutal. That ride is cool. I, I just can't believe that's kind of the toss-up on or the problem with going to Disneyland. Because I went... I feel I feel like uh, one time we went in in like three years we went maybe twice, and both times Pirates of the Caribbean was closed. We even get that. We didn't you didn't go. It. Oh, we even see that. It's the best ride. That's one of my favorite. I think that might be fun. Let's find out what what is your favorite Disneyland ride. I didn't get on much, so I got to say the Star Wars one. A little bit I did go on. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And you are you don't go on roller coasters. No. But you did go on the Matterhorn. Yes, I did. I wasn't expecting that. That kind of threw me for a loop. 
which is funny because I think most uh, roller coaster lovers would say that that's like that's like little league. You yeah. know, that's like a starter roller coaster. That's where I'm at, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the booth, favorite Disneyland ride. Space Mountain's definitely way up there on the <clears throat> list. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I'm still a big fan of the, I think it's a Finding Nemo ride now, but the submarine, the submersible. Isn't it like Finding Nemo now? I don't know. I don't. That one's another one that's always closed. Mm. Every time, every time we go to, we've been to Disneyland in the past probably 10 years, that ride's been closed. Hmm. Crazy. Now that I think about Yuck. it, we probably only ever think I've only been on that once. When I was a kid. Yeah, but it was so memorable. I really enjoyed that. That's crazy. I was expecting more rides there. I did. It seemed like There's everything everything was closed. Hmm. Maybe it's because okay. of Christmas. Like I've never been there for Christmas. Maybe, but yeah, it was nothing. Because I wanted to go in that one you were talking about when we yeah, yeah, showed yeah. the scene. That looked pretty nice. Yeah. And that's what I was looking for. That's what I went there for. And we just found another one. Yeah. That the one was closed up. Rise, I think it's called Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance, yeah. And that is the best ride, I think, at any park that I've I've ever even heard of. Like, it is such an immersive ride. What is that? Rise of the Resistance. Mm -hmm. So it's a Star Wars ride. Because there's only two in the whole Star Wars land. And that's the big one. The Millennium Falcon, you pilot. Mm -hmm. You can have an engineer and someone on the guns. Someone on the guns. Two engineers. And a pilot. Yeah. And a co-pilot. The six people. Total. Yeah, six people. Um, but it's kind of like he was saying, it's a toss-up. If you want to be pilot, that's a longer line. Because everybody wants to be pilot. So you end up being engineers a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um which I, I I think the experience is act, it's probably it's still the, the same. same. Yeah, you just you're not really the controls. Yeah. yeah, but the rise of the resistance is an immersive ride. So you're you're basically live action role playing Star Wars. You get into line. Um, they put you in a transport pod that gets abducted by an Imperial cruiser. You open up onto the Imperial cruiser with two hundred stormtroopers with guns staring at you and they start telling you like you you're you're our uh, prisoner now and they put you in a cell darth who, what's the new bad guy in star wars darth vader no kylo that's the ren. Old one. kylo ren mm. and when he's in his mask he comes out and he's i'm going to interrogate you and then uh the rebellion cuts a hole in your cell pulls you out puts you in a pod that they hijack, they tell you this whole story. So you feel like you're in it. And then you end up in a gunfight. I don't know. Is it the one where you're kind of just, uh, they used to have the one where you're just like sitting in like a kind of like star tours. Seats. Yeah, star tours. Is no. it like that? Nope. No, oh. not like that at all. Star tours is great, but it, I would, it's immersive mm -hmm. in the same way, but you don't walk around into a cell with stormtroopers and officers like. They're, these are actors that oh. you're interacting with. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's not on a screen. They're talking to you. They're walking you through it. They're walking you by gunpoint. Yeah, it's wild. What else has been going on, guys? Uh, Christmas, D, sounds like you had a great time. Jeremy, what do you have going on? I actually do have an interesting story for Christmas Day. So we've been doing this pod work i'm going to school i'm getting my bachelor's degree right now i'm doing a bunch of different stuff i decided christmas day that i'm gonna do nothing whatever which basically means whatever my wife wants to do yeah. and i asked her uh <clears throat> i asked her and she said nothing you do whatever you want to do so i put on the ps5 assassin's creed valhalla talk about immersion man I was <laughs> for 48 hours straight a Norse Viking. Um I'm I'm ended up in uh Asgard with uh Thor. Thor fighting the Jotunheim on the Bifrost. 
my wife comes up and touches my arm. And I'm in the middle of battle, dude. I'm raging. And what the fuck? <laughs> she goes, what? I'm like, don't do that. Anyway, I thought it was. Uh, there's no way the, that these video games are good for you. If that's what it does to you, man. But it brings up a good point for New Year's resolutions. If you got a problem, I, dude, the reason I don't play video games is because of if exactly what happened Christmas Day. I played until two in the morning. I was fishing for no reason at all because it's an option in the game. Building up my Viking village, um, upgrading my attributes. So when I smash someone with a hammer, it kills them faster. It's not interesting to me. Oh, it's fantastic. But 48 hours I spent on that game. I played until 2 in the morning, went to sleep, woke up, dreamed about fighting (laughs) (laughs) other clans and shit. It was deep. Uh, Deep. (laughs) Got immediately back on the game the next morning. And played until 10 o'clock that night. The only reason I got off at 10 is because we had work the next day. That's bad, man. You could waste your life. I'm And the whole time I'm playing, in, in the game, I'm fishing and I'm doing all this shit. But in real life, I'm standing there like this. I'm trans. <clears throat> Blood pressure just through the fucking roof. <laughs> just standing there. That's crazy. Cause that's how I was with uh, Resident Evil. Oh yeah, dude, those games are fantastic. You get hooked, especially the new ones, the newer ones. I haven't played them. Yeah, dude, they have you in a just like that. That's a game you get into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been trying to convince my wife to get a PS Five, but she will not. What are you gonna do with it? We have it in the living room. Yeah. But I really wanted to get that. <laughs> what am I going to do with it? I'm going <laughs> to put on a game. And like a drug, I'm going to get jacked out of my mind, immersed into a world through a screen. <laughs> and if you touch me, you'll scare the living shit out of me. You'll break me out of my trance. <laughs> and D, what's next in D? What? One thing I do want to talk about is the border. Yeah. Craziness has been going on there. I think we have a clip of what I'm talking about right now. Where thousands of migrants have joined a caravan in Central America that's making its way to the U.S. It comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken prepares to visit Mexico's capital tomorrow. Morgan Chesky reports from the border. Tonight in southern Mexico, a new migrant caravan is yeah, I think north. that's all we want to show right there. Women and children. Mm-hmm. That, that one giant mass. Can you just pull it back to that picture? Bro. Bro. That is crazy. Okay, so I didn't know anything about this. <clears throat> caravan in central america and from so i i was like oh i wonder why all these south americans and um like what's going on like why why does everybody want to come here and then um someone told me it's not even south americans no it's like people from all around the world are now going to central america south america and Mexico to come in to the border that way. Yep. Whoa. Because I read up on it, I read something, it was over 8,000. And that was a couple of days ago. It was over 8,000 that they kind of recorded. From 24 different countries. What are your concerns? I don't really have any concerns because, you know, basically they're doing what they got to do. But it's just we already got a backlog of three million cases. 
Yeah, I think the concerns are that. So when you say backlog of um, three million cases, that's right. Three, Jesus, that's a lot of cases. Not only that, that's basically about backlog of you're here illegally. That's already recorded. Yeah, that's here already. And you're gonna remain illegal for probably your entire life. Exactly. So they'll never catch up, dude. Pretty much everybody is in agreement that illegal immigration is not. It's not cool because you you never get to be a citizen, right? You're just always in the Here. country illegally. You never get to. You're not getting social security. You're not getting. Uh, you're not like officially paying all the same taxes as everybody else. You're not. You don't have a social security number. You're not getting some of the benefits. But. Uh. To me, I don't even think they, I think some care about, I think most of them, because like, like I said, wherever they're from or a lot of people, where, where a lot of them from, they don't have that anyway. Yeah. They don't, you, they don't have jobs. They don't have stuff that you can do when you get here. You can set up a little, yeah. vend a little thing, vend a shop on the corner or sell a little hot dog and stuff. And out here, you're, you're going to make money. Yeah. And you do pay some taxes just from living just from buying stuff and there's ta- at least state taxes yeah but none of it there's no federal taxes federal taxes that and stuff like, that yeah i kind of wish i didn't have to pay federal taxes <laughs> i pay my taxes but i wish i didn't have to i want to audit through. this man <laughs> now no right now stop <laughs> irs you busy why do i hang out with you guys i'm just, what what's the other major concern is that they're coming from all these countries and that there could be like bad guys, like undoubtedly there's and some bad guys. Trumpy sounding right here. Me? <laughs> <laughs> that was the rudest shit you've ever said to me. They're not sending over their best. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I. <laughs> <laughs> Who's sending them? <laughs> Who's even they? <laughs> oh, shoot. The cartel? I thought it was funny. I was talking to somebody like, you remember when uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio would do like his Circle K raids? Like those those guys are just like laborers <laughs> it's like i'm stopping i'm stopping the crime you know, like they're not committing crime otherwise they wouldn't be in front of the circle k like they're waiting for work like they're not the crime guys. right out in the open yeah <laughs> not they're, they're, they're not, not even open. hiding the criminals hide i think well they're harder to catch forget them yeah so we grab these guys yeah Just sitting here looking for work so what's kind of interesting is I found a, a tweet Elon Musk did today on this same. It kind of ties hand in hand with your little uh, with with this article, which me it that line there shows that under Biden you've got now more illegal immigration. Then there are American births, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. Uh, Okay, so he says almost no one seems to be aware of the immense size and lightning growth of this issue. According to the mayors, it is already overwhelming essential services in New York, Chicago, and other cities, which that is a valid point when it comes to immigration. If, If you're immigrating people and then illegally immigrating people and you don't even have enough resources in those cities in some cities to take care of the people who live in your city and now you're adding more bodies whether it's illegal or not illegal but you're adding more bodies to an already breaking system that's kind of a problem Mm. right a little bit so how do we solve let's solve the world's problems together no no Let's nah, do it. That's not even what I'm I'll trying do to it. do here. I'll I just want to. I just want to talk about it. it, poke fun at it, and then <laughs> and then say that the mayors aren't doing their job, and and then I'm going to move on. You're part of the problem. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> part of the problem. 
part of the problem, part of the problem. Anyway, <laughs> point your fingers. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, so that's interesting. So what's your takeaway from it? Like I said, I don't, I don't know, dude. It's, like I said, it's been going on. And it's yeah, almost for nothing. all of time. Right? Yeah. It's, just looking at this graph right here, that's just basically telling you that it's just a growing rate. That's all, all, they have, all it's been doing. Yeah. So for a long, long, long time. Time and now I think just out of control. Well, they don't have no control over it anymore. They can't do anything. So they say, "Hey, yeah. come on over." What if everybody just lives here? That's what's going to happen. That's what <laughs> this looks like. What everybody <laughs> wants to live here, dude. I don't care if everybody lives here. Mm. Why not? More neighbors. Just so what? Don't come to my house. I already That's got it. neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Stay out my backyard and don't come in. Yeah, which some of them, like most of the, the they're probably cool. There's a lot of people here I don't want coming in my house. <laughs> a lot of citizens I don't like. It's like the entire state of Alabama can stay the fuck out of my house, dude. Whoa, you know what I'm t- <laughs> <This is> a- <laughs> <laughs> No, you guys are cool. I guess. Nice riverboat. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> riverboat. Anyway, that's it. That's it for D's What's. Yes, sir. That was fun. <laughs> from, from the booth. booth. From the booth. This is going to be an exciting segment. I know it is. What do we got? What are we looking at? What do you got well, for What me? I'm looking at today is there is a, it's a, I, I, I always want to call it a documentary. It's not a documentary. It's a, it's a, it's a movie mm-hmm. that's produced by the Obamas. And if you did not know, the Obamas have had their hands in quite a bit of work uh, on the big screen, actually, they produce uh, quite a few films, docu-series. Uh, President Obama has um, hosted series and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have some conspiracy theories going on on the uh, latest project that was done and was executively produced by the Obamas with a movie titled uh, Leave the World Behind. Um, and with uh, the, the possibility of Obama being a lizard person slash Illuminati leader, they think it's foreshadowing the downfall of the Earth. Why well, leave the world behind viewers think the Obamas are sending a warning with the movie? Um, the movie Leave the World Behind is fiction, but many viewers are reading more into it. The Netflix apocalyptic thriller, which came out November 22nd, stars Julia Roberts, blah, blah, blah. The plot follows a family on vacation at a rental house on Long Island who get interrupted by strangers showing up amid a mysterious blackout and technology glitch. Both families work together to decide how to survive as technology such as phones and television break down and airplanes start crashing. So the the thing that... I see a lot of uh, screenshots of or or thumbnails of is there's a scene where they're walking down like a two lane highway somewhere and it's just full of uh, electric cars Mm -hmm. that have that cannot run anymore, whether from EMP or the government shutting them down. I haven't seen the movie myself, uh, so I'm just assuming speculating on that. But there's a reason why. So they're, they're adding the conspiracy theory together that this is why California and all these people are doing these electric vehicle uh, laws and want to replace your combustion engines so that the government can have more control of where you go, uh, how you get there, and always keep eyes on you. Kind of like, you know, watching through the webcam <clears throat> or whatever that is. All right. So what's a conspiracy that he... That the Obamas are telling you their plan. Mm-hmm. They're like a like a bad guy, like a hidden in plain sight kind of thing. Like yeah. uh, you know how the the Illuminati, the when they say the celebrities always do the triangle. It's like hey, it's right in front of you, and we're choosing to ignore it. Same situation here. They're telling you, hey, there's going to be you know a bunch of strangers, people you don't know, immigration, so on and so forth, filling you up. EMPs from Russia were shutting down your electric vehicles, pretty much causing chaos to set up a new world order. Yeah, it's crazy because I watched the movie too, and um, in the movie, a lot of the stuff that you're seeing is stuff that can't happen. Mm. It's not like there's some oh, this is way blown out of proportion. No, the stuff in the movie actually can't happen if 
somebody thought about really doing it. It can? It can. Oh. Interesting. Like, because basically it was like, like all the, <clears throat> anything electrical would just, just, just was shut down. Yeah. Any signals, everything was just completely gone to the point where planes had to start crashing because they had nowhere no to go. Navigation. No navigation, no nothing. Uh, so basically they're just in the air and they're just running out of gas. They don't have nowhere to go, so they're just look flying at, and crashing. Look what this says right here. One viewer wrote, have y'all watched Leave the World Behind? I feel so uneasy because this can easily happen tomorrow. Forget tomorrow. We're pretty much on step two. Step three is coming, and the Obamas are mocking all of us who don't live in the Hamptons as they warn us it's coming. I just, here's the thing. Obama seems like, he just seems like a nice guy to me. <laughs> <laughs> lizard. Nice lizard. Nah, calling out the former president, dude. <laughs> That's rough. I'm not going <laughs> to. We can't protect the booth. You know what? Yeah. IRS, you can come in. Secret Service, you stay. I don't know, man. I think I think the reason Netflix hired, I can only speculate here, but if I was Netflix, I would hire Obama because whether you love Obama or hate Obama, everybody watches everything Obama does. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And like you said, he was the former president, so he knows a lot of shit that we don't know. Oh, that's true. Oh. <laughs> he what knows is, a lot uh, that, so it, you put him in there, oh, he made this movie, and this movie like that, and you're going to think, oh, well, he probably knows a, a little friend? bit more than you yeah. know. So you're saying it's a, this is a, this might be a friendly like, hey, you guys, you yeah. want to probably look out for... Mm. Like I said, you just got you got to watch mm. the movie, because like I said, everything mm. in that movie can wow. happen. Yeah. So without him right now. blatantly coming out and saying, this is President Obama, don't get an electric vehicle. He's saying, hey, watch this movie. This yeah. book could be tomorrow. And it, and it can be. Interesting. No, I, and that's crazy because I'm just watching the movie, and now I wasn't even thinking about it like that. But yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, like, yeah, all this stuff actually can happen. That's in this movie can happen tomorrow. Damn. Right yeah. now. But you know what? I feel... We had this. This happened already before. Uh, people forget about Y2K. Everyone was freaking out. Computers were going to take over, start killing us, malfunctioning. Mm. Yeah, All that, that stuff was supposed to happen. Y2K was supposed to happen. People were building bunkers. I wasn't. I was excited. You were a child. Yeah. I was. Because they're yeah. building bunkers now. I, that's come up. Mm -hmm. Well, now. Facebook. Who's that? What's his see name? Mark uh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg's building that bunker. Biden got one going on. Biden's got a bunker. Yeah. How's it? He's got like. Pretty sure that's just a grave plot. He's got. <laughs> <laughs> Do twelve. You? Twelve I gotta, days. I'm left. gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got twelve days left to live. <laughs> Why would? It, <laughs> who's the bunker for? Going around a lot of people starting to millionaires starting to build bunkers now. Yeah. Who's but when are you? Like I said, no. like if I was a millionaire, I'm you gone. I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I'm going. I'm going. Where are you going? There's, oh, you can't. You can't, you can't run from it. You just no. Because <laughs> that's true too. Why? Yeah. Why survive in post-apocalyptic world? What's? What are you gonna do? Sit there and go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From, from the, the booth. booth. What do you got for us now? We're all going to die, and it's Iceland's fault. Interesting. Uh, Iceland is having a huge, huge series of volcanic eruptions going on there. There's a warning issue that can affect the climate across the planet, uh, trade routes, so on and so forth. It's a seriously dangerous thing that's happening over there and could be a precursor to even more uh, volcanic movement um, across the world and it's looking pretty dangerous okay D what do you think I think it's long overdue yeah <clears throat> yeah extinction it's long no just with the volcano and everything all the eruption like it's been brewing for a long time and they are talked about it, like okay we're going it's going to happen yeah like that where was that other big big one at Yellowstone 
No, uh, not Yellowstone. Yeah, Yellowstone. The geyser. That's like a super volcano. Yeah. And that thing was bad. Yeah. So I'm just. Oh, wait, wait. Are you talking about a recent eruption? No, I'm talking about a while back. It was a couple, mm. some years ago. It took out like a whole city. My God. When it erupted. I forgot where it was at, though. I think I know what you're talking about. Pompeii? Is that, one, is that the one? A volcano killed people at Pompeii. They they have entire bodies that got caught, caught in the magma yeah, flow or whatever yeah. they show. Like yeah, yeah, I think that's one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you are saying like we're long overdue for an extinction level volcanic event. It's mm-hmm. time. It's been too long. Yeah, and I agree. <laughs> 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 so okay, is this? The end of the world is this? Is the volcanoes the? Uh, is this the beginning of Iceland's? I think Iceland is tired of being ignored. When last time they had one there? Volcanic eruption. Yeah, I think this is this is the last one. Well, and it's still December continuing. 18th. Yeah, it's an ongoing. Series, yeah, I think you guys are thinking about here was Indonesia Mount uh, Semeru. Killed at least 34 people in 2021. Really? Mm-hmm. But if this was a precursor to more volcanic activity and Yellowstone, what's what's that the super volcano's volcano. name? What's it called? I don't it know. It has a name, like it's Old a, Faithful. It's a super, that's the geyser. Oh, okay. Old Yeller? Uh, that's a dog. Mm. Um, <laughs> that was a dog. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, if that one goes off, I mean, that pretty much wipes out the continental United States. Yeah. And they say that one's what, like some 100,000 years, 60,000 years overdue for an eruption? It's not even the eruption that's the problem. It's the like, fallout? I think that fallout is for nuclear, right? Nuclear fallout? Yeah. yeah it's the, the cloud point. coverage, like the amount of exhausted fume. And ash blocks out the sun entirely for a long time. Apparently longer than life can sustain without sunlight. Yeah, that's a lot of gas and everything that's coming out, dude. That's... Yeah. I don't know. Fuck it, dude. You know what? I think, it. like you said, I think it's almost time, dude. Like, all of my credit cards are maxed out. Like, just fucking bring it on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am sick of this shit. <laughs> uh, there is one more story that I want to yeah. talk about. And this, this one, Ugh. for us parents, um, is, is very interesting to me. This is something weirds going on with melatonin. Apparently, the, I mean, we've all been there. You, you, you love your kids. You love them so much. You want them to have everything. You give them treats, whatever. And then sometimes it's fuck them kids. Yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> Shut up. Pat enough. And what I've seen a lot of parents going to, and I've been guilty of myself, uh, is giving my kids a little boost with going to sleep because hitting them is just not appropriate anymore. <laughs> so you got to give them some medication. And and the the closest to natural thing that you can do, at least we were being told, was to give them the melatonin gum. And melatonin naturally uh, exists inside your brain, all living organisms, and helps you get into sleep and stay asleep. So they put that in gummies. They give it. They say it's safe for children. But now something weird's going on. But. Me looking at this article is like, is it the melatonin or is it why is your kids not going to sleep? Yeah, like is it your yeah. diet? Is it the diet that you're giving? Is it bad parenting? Yeah, like why is your my kids go to sleep on the drop of a dime? Right. I can say, hey, go to bed. They'll be in there. I'll go and look, and they'll be in there. Are they shaking? Out. Out. Are they afraid? No. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. no. <laughs> like, go to bed <laughs> yes sir no. that, is, that is a great point because it, it basically goes to the, the message on what you're saying is the same as almost like SSRIs pain medication they hand this shit out like candy mm-hmm. and this isn't over at the counter you buy it anywhere anywhere yeah and, and they come in 
different flavors and right. all that stuff. You got Flintstone melatonin. Melatonin chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> you got all this stuff. But like, as you see here, over the prior 10 Flintstone. years, the number of annual calls to poison control for pediatric melatonin overdoses have risen 530%. And it's actually been linked to, well, not directly linked so far, but I've stated uh, somewhere between, I think it was like 8 to 13 pediatric deaths can you somewhat look up, related to melatonin. Can you look mm. up what uh, melatonin actually is? Because if I understand it, like my understanding of what melatonin is, it, it's a hormone. It's a fucking mm. brain chemical. So right here, uh, melatonin is natural compound, specifically in indolamine, produced by and found in different organisms, including bacteria, uh, euco, you, some word I can't say, um, a substance discovered in 1958 in the penile gland from a cow. That could induce skin lightning in common frogs. Did you say penile gland? <laughs> they found it in cow dick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> it's discovered. Uh, it was subsequently discovered as a hormone released in the brain at night, which controls the sleep-wake cycle in vertebrates. Mm. So yeah, it's a hormone. You said something in the last pod that I feel like I let go, and I think it's worth addressing now. And the word penile triggered it. This is weird. You said in Hitman that you kill dudes with their dicks out. In Metal Gear Solid. In Metal Gear Solid. No, it was Hitman. No, it was in Metal Gear Solid. You said you'd wait till they were taking a piss. They pulled their dick out. In Metal Gear Solid. Okay. I'd hide in a box. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And the part of that that I feel like I did, was it like exclusively... Like did you did they have to have their dick out to kill them? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you play a whore game? <laughs> okay, that was it. That was that. All right. Okay. So they found melatonin in cow dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the penile gland. That's in the penile gland. I would have killed penile. it. If I is saw it, it's dead. Is it penile or is it it's, the... It's not penile. Like, it's... Penile? P- p- penile. <laughs> is it up here? Pull no. it up. Let me see what you're reading. Me. Hold on. I don't... Do, 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 do. The penile gland. Penile. Penile. That's Pen- what I said. It's the pineal. Pen- pineal. Pineal gland. P- pineal? Pretty sure you say it pineal. That says pineal. Hmm. Like w- Pineal County. Pineal. <laughs> uh, the pineal gland produces melatonin, serotonin. It's a hormone. See, a derived hormone which uh, modulates sleep patterns. So basically, w- this is, I don't think people understand that when you're giving this to your kid, you're giving them a, what's supposed to be a naturally a regulated hormone that your body produces when it needs it and you're you're giving your it's a hormone treatment so then you're fucking up all your like natural you're it out. yeah you're not supposed to do kind of like your dopamines like when people do drugs yeah and they do drugs and that dopamine pushes out one it's not supposed to it's not supposed to so but you're, you're forcing it out right and that's what make you feel good so, so this this is just Force it out and make them just tired. Right. Dude. So, yeah, you, so your kid goes to sleep, but the side effects are you don't even know what the side You're fucking you with all kinds of stuff. Like you said, if you forcing it out all the time, you're not going to be able to go to sleep. You're going to need it. keep needing it. Oh, yeah. Damn. And then they're okay. taking it, they're shaping it like Flintstones and just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have nine of them. It doesn't matter. Go to fucking bed. <sighs> yeah, I said I'm getting my kids none of that stuff, dude. It's, I can, they can just go like that. I was doing it. I used to take melatonin sometimes, um, and then because that was before, um, I got like a little more healthy and everything. I could, I had a problem sleeping, so I would take melatonin, and then I figured out that if I worked out, 
like going to run, then I was tired at night. Mm. That's how, so then that's how I go to sleep now. But before I would take Z quill melatonin. So we'd have it in the house. So my oldest son would be like, Oh, I can't go to sleep. I'm, I'm still awake. Yeah. Take a melatonin. Holy shit, dude. I have some in my house right now. <laughs> that was like two weeks ago. <laughs> I need to talk to my kid. <laughs> this is a fucking real problem. Whew. I didn't know you could overdose on it. Nobody did. They said it was fine. Said it was healthy. It's natural. They they pitched it. They marketed it. It's great for you. It's great for parents. Your kids will be all right. And now we're killing them. Dude. That's a fucking real problem. Oh, yeah. <sighs> all right. Thank you, Booth. From the booth. All right, man. 2024. It's hours away. What are your New Year's plans? Huh, my New Year plans. Yeah, I plan to say no excuses for anything, dude. Like, no excuses. Ooh, that's hard. Like, whatever you got to do, someone got a debt. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. I do want to get back in the gym. Yeah. And uh, my wife does too. And yeah. that's the one thing we were talking about, been talking about is let's just get it done. Like, no, whatever. <laughs> whatever we got to do, we're getting our debt down, whatever we got to do with our weight loss. Mm-hmm. Just have no excuses and, and do it. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. my main biggest one I'm going to have this year. Just no excuses to all 2024 at all. It's not 2024. There's no more excuses. Yeah. We're getting shit done. Damn. That's a pretty good one. I've been making excuses a lot lately. <laughs> Dude, I've I've been You want to hear my go-to for this entire month of December? The date, well the days are shorter. <laughs> And the sun's not coming up until nine o'clock. <laughs> so I'm doing like a third of the shit I normally do in a day. My productivity is just boom, tanked, man. And then I, I wake up, I'm waking up at like on my days off, like fucking eight o'clock. <laughs> that is, time rolls around where I should be going into the gym. Oh, but I got so much other stuff to do. There's yeah. not enough time in the day. It's get dark at 530. You know what you have. Hmm. <laughs> Seasonal affective disorder. I think I think it's just an excuse, dude. I, I don't believe in this shit at all. Yeah, but what better of an excuse can you have? Than to have the Mayo Clinic tell on with your back. Well, yeah. Seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression that's related to changes in seasons. I'm not depressed though. I just don't. I'm just lazy. That's yeah. That sounds like bullshit. Yeah, I'm not sad. I just don't want to work out. <laughs> 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 I don't want to work out. I don't want to write a fucking essay about art. In global arts and humanities, I don't want to, I don't want to wake up early, do my push-ups, do my workout, do my run, do sauna. I have an ice bath in three months. Mm. For a while, I was doing that shit every day and it, I felt great. But it's hard to fit everything you want into a normal day. Excuses. It's excuses. It's such <laughs> bull. I'm, dude, I'm I'm sucked into the trap of it. <laughs> Even when I'm talking about excuses, I make excuses. It gets better. It'll get better. Just got to do it. Just got to do it. Stop making excuses and do it. I like that. Uh, booth, what are you doing for... Uh, what What's 2024 hold for the booth? Um, I want to... Get better at my job at running the booth. Yeah. Because I'm not good at it. 
you know, I think we appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I, I, I can hear you thinking it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's affecting me. I think if that's your plan for 2024, we might even consider paying you. <laughs> um, big ones for me, the exercise as well. I've been off of it for a while. I feel lethargic. I feel lazy. Mm. I'm giving up. Uh, I don't do drugs. Yeah. So I'm going to stick to that one. I'm not mm. going to start doing drugs. Um, alcohol. Alcohol is gone for my life forever. I'm done with it. The risk to reward for alcohol is all risk, no reward. Uh, the more Ooh. the more I uh, yeah. drink, just the less I know why I do it. It's just bad. It's just so bad for you. It's literal poison. The older I get, the more it affects me. The more it affects my family life, my work life, my social life, my anxiety, so on and so forth. It's just all bad. And now, especially into my uh, older age, I know how to enjoy myself without the help of substances, which was a harder thing to do in adolescence because you're so unsure of yourself and your identity and who you want to be. It's easier to let loose on that. I know how to be me, and I know what the best version of me looks like, and that doesn't have substance abuse with it. Mm. So letting go of, of the substances, letting go of alcohol forever. Um, I also want to get into um, some sort of therapy, some sort of therapy or counseling or just a community of people who are struggling through things, hear their stories, see how it relates to me, and find better ways to to be honest and vocal about things that I'm going through. Yeah. This last year, I started taking SSRIs, uh, antidepressants, and the effects that it's had on me mentally was pretty positive in the beginning. And the the longer that I stay on these things, the less that they work. Mm -hmm. Now they just make me feel normal. I tried to come off of them. I tried cold turkey. Everyone says, "Don't do that." I'm a risk taker. Stop doing it cold turkey. That hurt like hell. Like my my um um what's the word I'm looking for? My attention, my focus, all out of whack. Felt like I had pressure on my eyes. Uh, like dizzy, fuzzy. Did not feel like myself. So I had to put myself back on my SSRIs just to feel okay, normal again. And I've reduced my dosage. I started taking half as much. So I'm taking one one capsule every other day, and I'm talking to the psychiatrist who had prescribed them for me on on weaning off of them in a healthy way. Because what we were talking about with the melatonin, this has really affected my brain's chemistry, uh, and it really did help in the beginning. So I'm not saying I'm not against SSRIs, but be careful with them. Take your time and focus on the problems that are underneath your depression besides masking them with yet another drug, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm going to work more on my, my mental health. I think that's going to be beneficial for me, my work, my family, my relationships, and um, and, and stop uh, using substances, alcohol, and even and uh, the SSRIs, the antidepressants. Those things can help, but unless I can be honest about what's causing this sort of thing, then I'll never get off of them. <coughs> So that's what I'm looking forward to in 2024 is becoming the best version of myself, uh, taking care of my mental health, physical health, and and getting rid of substances. Yeah, I think a lot of those things go hand in hand. You know, like some, I would think the physical health probably translates into some better version of mental health and back the other way. Um, Look good, feel good. <laughs> but all time. Uh, on that note, I think in 2024, 24 i might start abusing alcohol looks like a good time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nah i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i think you should go for it <laughs> i've done it it's not a good look for me i always end up with my pants off in a swimming pool somewhere <laughs> weird <clears throat> my new year's resolution what am i going to do for new year's I'm going to start uh, carrying a piece of pizza. 
around <laughs> in my inventory <laughs> for bear attacks. Extremely common. Probably a good distraction. In the south <laughs> valley of Arizona. Hey, man, you're attacking my attack. Hey, man. You, <laughs> you look down, you run. <laughs> I'm Pizza. For, yeah, for de-escalating the situation, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> almost any situation. Yeah. Hey, so I'm saying I'm learning pizza. a lot of stuff. Yeah, you cut someone off. You meet each other at a red light. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> Row it in his car and drive away. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> Dick. Oh shit! <laughs> I got pizza sauce on my <laughs> shirt. <laughs> it's my favorite shirt. Still, that's assault, brother. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm I'm a little sick of uh, just like for Christmas. I'm a little sick of doing New Year's. Such a bummer. You know, mm-hmm. it's almost just become a reminder that I'm old and running out of time. I mean, that other people, I'm not old. I'm young. Oh, you're going to be middle-aged this year. No. Yeah, 35. Officially middle-aged. Is that middle-aged? Yeah. So what if your resolution is a crisis? Yeah. I think I got that covered. Avoid the crisis? I can't do it. Or was the crisis starting this podcast? Crisis started when I was... 15 <laughs> it was over by the time i was 20 I, I think i got that out of the way early i don't know man a new year's resolution for me is really hard i like no excuses i really like no excuses can we go ahead and play that dude yeah we can play that dude so i think it'll fit in nicely here <laughs> I was like 10 minutes late and I'm like hey Doug you know there was traffic on the 5 freeway and then my car had a hard, had a hard time starting it and then he just put his hand up like just stop me from talking and I stopped because I have so much respect for that guy and I looked at him and he goes hey circumstance does not change responsibility and I was like holy fuck he's right like the fact that I was late I could I could have just left an hour earlier gotten to work 45 minutes earlier and taken my time and chilled until my shift was going to start circumstance does not change your responsibility so how often do you use excuses if you've got responsibility your circumstances do not change that you do whatever you've got to do regardless of how you feel yeah so i think that just kind of embodies your New Year's resolution. It kind of embodies your New Year's resolution too, which is, and and really that I think for me it, as well, that's really what I want. Which is, I think this year, I my think my twenty twenty four resolution is going to be to reduce my incidence of failure. So if I if I put it at If I just go ahead and create a scale and say that this year I had 100% failure, which is every time I didn't go into the gym and I should have, every time I didn't, um, you know, I cheated on my diet, basically. I thought he was going to say wife, dude. I thought he was going to say wife. I'm like, pump the brakes. (laughs) No way. <clears throat> that is not an option. <laughs> I thought I'd go say school or something. Like, God damn. <laughs> every, on my last couple essays. Yeah, every <laughs> time I used AI to write an essay. <laughs> <laughs> school? <laughs> it, no. Um, I, I, it's because well, I don't really have a diet. So it felt weird to say cheat, cheat on the diet. But just when I eat, you eat shit that you know you shouldn't eat. I ate a lot of that this year. Yeah. Out back. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That 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 place out back, that is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> See, me, D and I, we not only do this podcast together, we also work together uh at a plant. We're maintenance dudes. And 
we have we have a break <laughs> area <laughs> where it's like a everyday potluck for these guys that we work with. It's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. We have everything you need. <laughs> but it is a big problem. Pretty much daily, I have to say no. And so, of course, some days you're going to not say no. Which bring, brings us back to our uh, weird, bald-headed Russian intense friend. B- but he's kind of got a point. Now you got to get used to saying no. Yeah. There's so much junk out there. So I think my my New Year's resolution is just to reduce my instance of failure. I'm looking for, you know, maybe cutting down to 50% is not realistic, but at least 90. Get a 10% improvement on not missing the gym, fitness goals, uh, productivity goals and also i would like to in, um boost my mental capacity on to the new year fellas i'm super excited to be a part of this with you guys looking forward to everything that 2024 has to bring all of us yes sir. and the future of the re3 podcast thank you guys I'm just getting better yes sir just getting better Oh, man, that's a good 2020. Maybe for the podcast, we got our individual goals. But for 2024, for the viewers, what the RE3 podcast New Year's resolution is, every episode to get better. It's already happening. It's already happening. It's easy to say it. (laughs) RE3 pod number two. Yeah. (laughs) Way better than episode one. (laughs) Night and day. Episode one was wild. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we did a two. We did two hours of filming. Don't we got thirty nine minutes. You had to admit it. You had to admit it. <laughs> that is wild. Probably not. Really, not that bad. All right. Final thoughts. Here we go. You've got a lousy dick. Or that's what your girl says anyway. <laughs> uh, keep a piece of pizza in your inventory for bear attacks. Yeah, but remember what Steve Carell said about uh, menstruating ladies. Don't keep them around. They attract bears. The message from the border. Everyone wants to live here. Everyone. But I'm not entirely sure why. Obama is the leader of the Illuminati. Obama is not the leader (laughs) of the Illuminati. (laughs) Keep fucking that one up. I don't know what. uh... Netflix is not an Illuminati brainwashing tool to disseminate the one world orders propaganda. That one's for the booth. You people are crazy. Icelandic volcanoes are going to destroy the earth, but who cares what Iceland is doing anyways? Ignore them and everything else, too. Give up potato chips, alcohol, pot, and sin for the month of January and get your ass back to work. And try to be on time. Not for your boss, but for you. And a little bit for your boss, too. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. Akeem Ali, take it home for the RE3 podcast, please. The other day I whooped a cockeyed nigga ass Cause I thought that he looked at me wrong Abortion clinic, I do not kid around Play with me bitch and you bound to be assed out Hospital gown, nigga, I'm born in water You toilet water, talk to me in a cordial order Or be a special victim on law and order Kill them all, nigga, no more job The gay part of your family, this about to be a homicide Beat his face till his shit start leaning A married couple at a Pornhub convention I'ma keep fun, on guys. swinging yes, Hey, I hope you slip and fall on a rubber dick You a fucking bitch, a broken common, nigga